What's up, Radar Cars family? In this video, we're gonna be talking about five things I love and hate about our 2021 Mustang Mach-E Premium. Firstly, this is the Mach-E 4, so it's putting out 266 horsepower and more importantly, 428 pound-feet of torque. Secondly, hate is a strong word, so what I really mean is minor inconvenience, which you know how the marketing folks are, but we mostly love our Mach-E, and after these words of wisdom, I'm gonna tell you why. Five things I love about the Mach-E. Instant, effortless, and quiet power. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know daddy like. <laughs> Let me pull it together. <clears throat> Sorry about that, that was an embarrassing moment. <clears throat> Not one of my finest. This car makes the jump to light speed instantaneously. At highway speeds, it doesn't throw you back in your seat, but it's still powerful. Just not as much oomph, of course, but that would be remedied by the GT model. But again, from a standstill, I leave everyone in the dust quietly and effortlessly. I love that electric torque. Of course, my Ducati Diavo would leave the Mach-E choking on my exhaust fumes. Check out my channel if you want to see videos of my Diavo. Two. I love this beautiful and huge detailed touchscreen and instrument panel. It's like the future every time I get into the car. From the cool startup animations to the smallest details, like when you go to change your settings and you push this car button here and it drives out. And then when I'm done, it drives back in. Everything including the car's manual with video tutorials built right in are here at my fingertips. Check out my Mach-E in the dark video if you haven't already done so, as I showcase some of this cool technology. There's a link to that at the end of this video. 3. On a related note, the technology. This car is loaded with life-improving technology like cruise control, electric windows, air conditioning. Oh wait, I'm in the wrong decade. The car comes with self-driving on over 100,000 miles of US roads when the update finally comes out. Let's go, Brandon. Oops, I mean, let's go, Ford. <laughs> Silly lane departure correction, Wi-Fi, automatic emergency braking front and rear, radar all around the car, bird's eye view backup cameras, front parking cameras. Here's the car self-parking for me. It's backing into a tight parking space between two cars. It's careful not to hit the cars driving around me. I gotta tell you, it's pretty scary the first time you do this to put your trust in the hands of a car. It also does parallel parking and even drives out of the parking spaces for you. The list of technology goes on. It's the most high-tech vehicle I've ever owned. Just a hair above my 2022 Ducati Multistrada V4S, which is epic by the way. Link to that video below. Four, the design of the car. There's not one thing I do not like about the interior and exterior of the Mach-E. It's beautiful, it's sporty, it's futuristic, but not too futuristic. Just kidding, I love that Tesla truck. I do love me some futuristic looking vehicles. Even the starting animations, everything is just streamlined and beautiful including the pony laser lights, AKA puddle lamps, that you're treated to at nighttime. I love this polish that Ford is so good at implementing like this. Great job, Ford. Five. Okay, fans are divided on this one, but I actually like that it borrows the Mustang name. The Mustang brand sets it apart from the average Ford car. Do I feel like I'm really in a Mustang? No. Having owned a 2018 Mustang GT and a 2018 GT350, I can tell you that this is not a Mustang, but the name, looks, and badging makes the car look and feel more special. It just shows that while we still have our beloved V8s, Ford is also embracing the high tech with their Mustang moniker. I like the pony badging, the headlights, the taillights, the curves, and general Mustang aesthetic. Good move by Ford. And for those who don't like it, it doesn't really say the word Mustang anywhere, so you can ignore it if you don't like it. I call it the Mach-E anyway, and I think most people do, so it doesn't have to be a big deal. I gotta tell you though, across my four BMW M3s, my 2017 STI, my Mustang GT, and my GT350, this car commands at least as much attention as those cars. That's what we love about our Mach-E. The following things, not so much. One, departure times allow you to set your temperature and settings for the mornings when it might be cold outside and you wanna get into a nice warm car, or the afternoons during the summer when it's hot and you wanna have your car air conditioned, etc. 
You can also have off-peak charging so you can save your money by charging overnight or on the weekends instead of charging all day when electricity is the most expensive. However, my gripe is you can't have off-peak charging and departure times at the same time for daytime scenarios. This is not cool because our electricity rates have just almost doubled here and I prefer to charge overnight when we have off-peak rates but my car in the afternoon won't warm up unless I charge it during the day. The car has to be plugged in for departure times, so that defeats the purpose of the off-peak charging feature, at least in the afternoons. Two, related to my first point, I can't use off-peak charging when it's cold outside anyway, because the car asks to be plugged in all day when it's cold. But I get it, batteries don't like the cold. There's not much we can do about that with current battery technology. Three, limited Ford Pass app functionality. While the app is great, you can start your car, monitor charge levels, and a handful of other useful things. But what I'd like to see added is the ability to adjust heated seats and steering wheel and cabin temperature directly from the app. It's not a huge gripe because you can set up everything before you turn the car off and the car will remotely start with your heated seats and steering wheel on, but it would just be a nice to have if you could do it on the app for those six degree days when you forgot to set up your car in advance. Four, navigation. Across all of my cars, I am always disappointed with navigation. Google Maps is far, far superior, and I always end up using my phone. The Mach-E has the best navigation I've seen in a car so far, where I can actually say things like navigate home or navigate to Pepe's Pizza, but the voice functionality and routes are not near Google Maps level, so I often just use my phone. Five, and I'm really reaching here, the frunk that is the front trunk is hard to operate, which is typical of frunks in general on Tesla's too, I hear. It's a minor gripe as I don't really use it anyway. It's cool that it acts as a cooler, pun intended, but there isn't a ton of space to use. But hey, any extra space is appreciated. My only worry is stressing the paint by having to force it closed so hard if you scratch it with your ring or something. So just be careful. But again, it's a minor gripe. All right guys, so ultimately the Mach-E is a blast to drive all year round. It performs great in the snow and even over ice. The technology is not just gimmicky, but it really provides life improvements. I can't tell you how nice it is on these nine degree Northeast mornings to come out and sit in a warm car with a warm car seat, a warm steering wheel, and have the car ready to go for you. I love that you can save money charging during off-peak times most of the time. The car looks stunning, it turns heads, and so far I haven't had any major issues with this car. All right guys, always remember the motto, always be kinder than necessary, and I will see you in the next one.